Hope I still remember how I do this. Hey guys, welcome back to Vision All Access. Yes, as I pretty much start out with almost every video, it's been a while, but uh, you know, trying to make my way back online on YouTube. And today we got something special for you. Going back to a very dark day, some might call it a black day, Black Friday, I made a decision, a decision I've been talking about for years. And it's something that really shook me up some ways not so good, some ways pretty awesome. I went over to the enemy. That's right, today we're talking about the awesome and in my opinion underrated iPhone XR. So getting right to it, a couple disclaimers. Yes, I am still calling it XR. Sometimes I trip myself up and I say 10, but just like I said in my iPhone 10 video, I'm gonna be referring to this phone as the iPhone X. Why? Because I just feel like being badass today. So that's what I'm calling it, that's what other people call it. We know, okay? Another disclaimer, if you guys have been following the channel for a little bit, you know I'm no Apple fanboy. I'm kind of the polar opposite of that. I have used Android since the very beginning. I've only experimented in Mac OS and iOS. I do have an iPad uh, 2018 6th generation, and now I have the iPhone XR, and I'm experiencing you know, the entry level of continuity and the Apple ecosystem. So, yay me. But let's get into why I'm making this video even though it's been months since the XR launch. And that's because I truly think that this phone is completely underrated. So getting things started off, you can see with the specs, we're not dealing with any slouch here. The iPhone XR definitely brings the same kind of powerhouse that comes from its more you know, potent siblings. XS and the XS Max have a higher IP rating and one gigabyte more RAM. Aside from that, you're getting internally the same phone. There's no real difference here, which I applaud Apple for huge. Yes! Yes! Go Apple! First, we're gonna get into the big controversy of this phone that pretty much everyone, when they saw the specs, even at the original keynote, uh, really batted a couple eyelashes, including myself. The display. It is an LCD panel, or as Apple likes to call it, a liquid retina display. And yes, at only 326 pixels per inch, looking at any Android phone these days, you're gonna get a better packed and specced screen, even on a more budget-friendly device. But does that matter? On my opinion, no. I took my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, the phone that I transitioned from, right next to the iPhone XR when it was on display. And I put the screen side by side, loaded up the same wallpaper, and I have to admit, even though the AMOLED screen was, in my opinion, clearly superior, this phone was no slouch in the screen department, and some of the times, unless I'm looking at those really, you know, not so deep blacks on an LCD screen, it's actually not too bad. I actually enjoy the screen, it gets plenty bright for my use, and I love it, I really do. Now, backtracking a little bit, there is one more key difference that the XR has compared to its more sizable siblings, the XS and XS Max. And that's the fact that there's only one shooter on this thing, on the rear camera. The other two phones have two shooters, a telephoto lens as well as a normal portrait shooter. This one just has the regular shooter. However, it still does give you portrait mode, kind of. If you go and take a picture of your dog or your favorite teacup and you want that nice rounded bokeh effect and edge detection, yeah, the XR is not the phone for you. But using the machine learning, it does give you portrait mode on humans. I think I caught you with your eyes closed. <laughs> As you can see in these sample photographs I've taken of not only myself, but also my daughter, you know, the camera is pretty good. Even the front facing camera with these selfies, you know, you can clearly see that it's got some pretty good portrait photos. Don't get me wrong, the Pixel is still the reigning king in my humble opinion. 
So now you can see two things that were kind of detractors, not really being detractors anymore. I'm gonna get into what really makes this the best iPhone, the battery life. Up until now, the iPhone 8 Plus was the reigning battery king. Until the XR came around, this thing trounces it. You have been dethroned, iPhone 8 Plus. In your place, in my opinion, a way more attractive phone. I'm also gonna touch on the design really briefly here. So the design for this phone, it's like the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 had a love child together. Not the mama. That's the best way to actually describe the XR. And all in all, I'm actually very impressed. I get through a day of usage probably with anywhere from 40 to 70% battery left, you know, depending on my usage per day. Knowing that I can always count on my phone to have some battery even deep into the night before I go to bed, huge plus. Couple of the battery life, the design, iPhone's optimizations for its apps, all together in a package, the question stands, is this phone worth it? And honestly, I have to say yes. That's the main reason I switched here, is not because it's the edge entry level iPhone, it's the iPhone that made sense to me. So let's get to the question of this video. What do you guys think of the iPhone XR? Do you think that it is the more value friendly iPhone now that you know everything about it? Or do you think you'd clearly go for something else? Your opinion counts, let me know down in the comments. That's why that section exists. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I try to stay active on there as much as I can. I love responding to you guys. Thanks for checking in on Vision All Access and I will catch you guys in the next video.